Baptism is a marvelous thing. Shallow enough that any child can know it and delight in it, and yet deep enough that no wise Christian will ever reach the bottom of studying and meditating upon it. For here, simple water combined with God's word takes one from death to life, a child of wrath to a child of paradise. For we see this deep wonder in the baptism of our Lord today. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. And it makes no sense. He's standing with everyone else in a baptism of repentance, a baptism that is given for sinners, those who have committed their own transgressions and are in need of repenting, meaning turning from their sin and abiding in the forgiveness of their sin. And our Lord Christ has no need of that. And yet he stands there in the Jordan with John. And John has the right response. He has a beautiful response. He says, I have need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Meaning I am the one who has fallen. I am the one who is sinful. Because Jesus responds back. And in the English it just says, let it be thus now. Meaning just do it, John. But what Jesus is saying is, you're right, John. You do have need to be baptized by me, not I, by you. Because baptism is for the fallen. Baptism is for those that are deprived, that have the stench of sin and the stains of it. Now I could preach all day today going through every single commandment every single law, every single moment of sin, but you either get it or you don't. Some get it early in life at the age of five. Some get it at 95. Some never get it. And the reality is this, that we have nothing to brag about. Nothing to get angry about. Nothing to be jealous about. Nothing to feel right about. It's kind of like getting beat up. I've mentioned this before. It's like if you've ever been beat up, ever been in a fight and someone beat you up, it shuts you up. I remember when I was younger, I used to do mixed martial arts, which is where you get into a ring with no gloves on. This was the old days. No gloves on and use every type of martial art to try to beat the other guy into a pulp. I did that for fun. It was a fun experience and I enjoyed it. And I had a big mouth. I thought I could beat anybody. And then I came up against a guy named Justin Woodley. And Justin was six foot three and about as fast as you saw him bolt. This dude was tough and I thought I could take him. So I talked a big game. But after about a minute and 45 seconds, Chris's big mouth was shut for him by Justin Woodley's hands, fists, and I think a knee was thrown in there every now and then. It's good to get beat up. It's good to have yourself on the ground with nothing to brag about. Because after that fight, I walked out not bragging anymore, but silent with my head down. And that is John. I have need, says John, to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? You and I have need to be baptized. You and I have need to be quiet, to be silent with head down. Nothing to brag about. Doesn't that come forth in our epistle lesson? Let he who boasts not boast in himself, but boast in the Lord. Meaning you talk about Jesus. He is my redemption. He is my sanctification. He is my righteousness. He is my wisdom. Never I, but always him. Why? Because Jesus said it to John. He said, thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all dikaiosune, righteousness. 
meaning that which is pleasing in the eyes of the Father, that which is his approved will. It is good that we do this right now because Jesus did not go into the waters as you and I do as a sinner in need of his own forgiveness, but instead as the anointed one. Did we not just sing that? For us baptized, for us he bore, for us His fast and hunger soared. The reality is he goes into that water, into that Jordan River, and comes up immediately as the anointed sin bearer, the Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Not coming forth from that river perfect and pure and unblemished, but covered with every single one of our sins. It's like tribal tattoos. You've seen like Samoans with the tattoos all over their body. That's our sins. Jesus telling the narrative of those he has saved. Because when Jesus came out of that water, the heavens were opened. Not to everybody. That's the best part. It wasn't just open like it's now some open border that we can now walk into heaven however we want to get in there. That's not what happened. It says it was open to him. Open to Christ alone. That now he brings in who he desires to bring in. And he, the one to whom the heavens are open, because who closed them? Adam himself. Through his lazy, apathetic ways and taking of the fruit and you and I descending from him, heaven closed to us, yet opened to Christ alone. The Father then speaks as Jesus is anointed with the dove, the Holy Spirit, showing that this is the one. This is the sin bearer. This is the atoning one. The Father speaks, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And Christ then goes from there. Goes forth with your sin. Goes forth with your failure. Goes forth with your lusts and jealousy and anger. Your days you have to be right and the days you're mad that you were wrong. The days that you won and the days that you lost. All of those days rolled up into one body that is Christ and he took all of it through the temptation, through the suffering, through the rejection, all the way to the cross and there on the cross with outstretched arms, heaven was shut up to him in rejection because he is the center. And there drained the Father's wrath down to the dregs for you. That now the Father is not angry with you, closed up to you. But now in Christ, you are at one with the Father, loved and perfect, because Christ has taken everything ridiculous and terrible about you and about me and has drowned it in his blood, put it to death with every nail driven into hands, feet with every thorn, and to the brow with every whip on the back. Jesus put it to death and made satisfaction that now heaven is open for you who follow in Christ's train. You who go behind Christ is now no longer silent are you, but now no one can shut you up because all you do is say, I'm following that guy. I'm with him. I'm behind him. He's gone in before me and he's bringing me along for the ride and it is joyful. You do your hair toss, you check your nails and boss it up and go with Jesus all the way onto the realm immortal and no one can stop you. No one can impede your path toward paradise. The devil, world, sinful flesh, even your old Adam that tries as he will to drag you back down into bitterness. No, nothing stops you now. Because you are baptized into Christ, united with him in a death like his, that you shall rise with him in a resurrection like his. A child of paradise. So be at peace, my brothers and sisters, and take heart. You have a new life. It's even better, you actually have life now in Christ. Heaven is open to you. The Father cannot wait to spend all of the ages here now and unto eternity with you. So take heart. Christ has fulfilled all that you may be forgiven and claimed forever. In Jesus' name, amen.